Uh, good evening, everybody, or good morning, or good day. This is a game called Card Shark. And, uh, this was announced not too long ago, and I remember seeing it and thinking, I won't, I'm not gonna play this. A and then I uh, kind of liked the look of it. And I like cards. The thing that really sold me was that it was influenced by, um, Barry Lyndon, which is one of my favorite movies. Like, the scenes in that movie where they're lit by candlelight, they're playing cards, and then there's some cheating going on. That is basically the genesis for this, from what I understand. And that is kind of cool, so... Never would have expected a game to be based on fucking Barry Lyndon, of all things, but, you know... Oh. Oh, jeez. Alright, well... I think I'm an adult. I have a controller. A regular gambler is good. My dear player, it is with the utmost diligence that I must warn you against the hazards of this game. It will teach you secrets that will turn you as easily into a beggar as into a king. <laughs> it is based on the memoirs San Parole. Parole? <laughs> Parole! A dangerous manuscript I unearthed in my beloved Bon... Gave up. Be careful as you play through these fateful events and unravel the destiny of the Forgotten Queen. For here lies the work of the devil. Sataniel? Hey, that, that wasn't the cards. All began on the misty morning of 1743 near Pau in the south of France. Hey, lad. Come here. Is that Redmond Barry himself? Did your majesty have a good nap? I don't give a tinker's damn. Patrons are coming to work now. What are you doing fidgeting like a salmon about to meet the croutier? If you are about to have one of your convulsions, then you'd best make sure my customers don't see it. Come on, lad. You need to earn your keep. Just do your job. You lad, come. Pour me a drink. Ah, that nearly ended up on my coat. I'd like another cup once you've cleaned this up. Many thanks, lad. Now, why don't you keep me company? Take a seat. That chair is fine. Couldn't help but notice your mistress is rather rough with you. Smile. Can't you speak? You can't. How oh, fascinating. Indubitably linked to these seizures your mistress spoke of so fondly. The ancient Greeks believe people like you possess prophetic abilities, you know. Load of nonsense, if you ask me. Either way, you strike me as an intelligent fellow. Hmm, would you like to earn some extra cash? Yes. That can only mean yes. Listen closely. Though there's money to be made, there's plenty more to lose. I'm gonna play a game of cards tonight, and I'm going to win, thanks to you. But before I explain my plan, I have a question. Do you know what suits are? The sweets. <laughs> yes. On to the plan, then. You will serve us wine as we play and peek at my opponent's cards. Then you'll signal to me the best sweet in his hand. <laughs> Whichever he has the most of, but how will you signal, hmm? It's, it is suit, right? Like, I'm not, I'm... Card... Suits. Hang on. Pronunciation. I'm not even kidding. Now I don't know. Now I'm doubting. Oh. Suit. Cards. 
Thank you, Google. Suit cards. Suit cards. After serving the wine, you will take your cloth and wipe the table in a particular pattern corresponding to that suit. That made sense, I hope. Good. Let's discuss the wiping patterns you can use as signals. For hearts, you will wipe in a clockwise, circular motion. If his best suit is spades, wipe in an anti-clockwise, circular motion. If you see a majority of diamonds, wipe a straight line up and down. What? No. And if you see clubs, wipe the table side to side pattern. How the fuck do you even think of making a game based on this concept? You seem to be getting the hang of it. I've thrown a lot at you, but should we try the next trick? Let's try you peeking over my shoulder. Um, when you see my hand, signal to me the best suit. I didn't even get a chance to look. And you don't really have a lot of time, and you have to kind of get, like, an intuition for how to know when your wine is being poured too much. I take it you've had enough practice? Wonderful, meet me back here tonight, and we'll see about making some real money. Wonderful! Meet me back here tonight! Where is he gone? The gentleman who's at this table. He didn't pay for his wine. I'll have to dock that from your wages. Wow, what a penis, man. Later that day. I do like the art style. And again, the candlelit card table stuff. That's just straight out of, um, Barry Lyndon. Mm, I'm in luck tonight. You, on the other hand, you will probably die soon in the gallows or of the pox. Uh, that will depend on whether I embrace your principals or your mistress. Be careful, sir. Uh, my apologies, I spoke in jest. Uh, let me refill your cup. How much do you want to bet? Uh, how about five livres? I don't know how to pronounce that. Performance anxiety, the reminder section is there if you need a refresher. What? How did you do that? Just the luck of the draw, my good man. A drink and everything would be forgotten. They don't have an inclination that this dude is looking over their shoulder. Wipe that grin off your face. That sort of setback happened to everyone, my good friend. Uh, only yesterday I lost a fortune. You know what I did? I had a drink! Allow me. Young man, fortune favors me. I think I deserve another drink before we keep playing. Would you be so kind as to refill my cup? Many thanks, lad. I'll say when. When? You've played the first rounds well, lad. But look to our opponent and you can see he's starting to get suspicious. I fear it won't be long before he's had enough. Damn, we've been scuppered. Hi. What are you two whispering about over there? Nobody cheats me. Do it. Someone's gonna get shot.
Yep. Ah, that's unfortunate. Forgive me, lad. I got a little carried away. The law will soon be upon us. We need to go now. Well, this is darker than I expected, but also... You know, if you watch Barry Lyndon, it's kind of right in line with that. That odious fellow appears to have left his parse. How careless. It is nice to see a completely original concept for a video game, though. Notwithstanding his boastings, his barefaced lies, and his manifold eccentricities, I thought him an astonishing man, as he was always astonishing me. Camp of the Kaz Carrots? <laughs> I am so uncultured swine. Arenio, my friend, do you hear that in the breeze? The rustle of the leaves and the murmur of the nearby brook? As our good friend, the, comp the Count, has come. We will stop here for a while. Why? The gentleman who killed your patroness is Colonel Gabriel, commanding the uh, Bern Regiment. It won't be long until he accuses you of this murder. I'm afraid that makes you the perfect scapegoat. Your animosity with the deceased is well known. You are poor, young, and mute. And you fled the crime scene with a notorious thief. Me? But do not worry. We are safe here. This is the camp of the Kaskarots. They are friends and they do not talk. I'm so sorry for this voice, by the way, but I'm going to keep doing it. And like all the other Romani in France, they fall between the cracks. They are invisible, a bit like you. Make yourself at home. I need to talk to the magician. Are you done making faces? Good for you, good for you. So you're the new pet of our dear Count de Saint-Germain. Well, don't answer that. My name is Arenio Funes, cheat and humble artist of the shadows. I trick my fellow man for money and adventure. Would you like to learn magic? I thought you might say that. It's called Three Card Monty. During the Hundred Years' War, an English lord lost the entirety of his estate over this game. Which is a very English thing to do. Then he threw himself off the White Cliffs of Zdova. Which is a very French thing to do. I, don't, I can't even keep my accent straight anymore. So follow closely. Do you see the queen here? I'll put her here. Now follow the queen closely. Show me where the queen is. Hmm. Magic, isn't it? It's a simple trick, really. All in the motion, the flow. I trust you understood all that. Why not show off what you've learned to the magician? Oi. Yes, you. There's nobody else here. Come back. Ah, uh, you actually thought the secret to three-card Monty was to wave your arms like a fool. I worry about the Count's judgment these days. You would have looked a fool in there, but I suppose we can't have that, as it makes me look bad, so I'll show you how it really works. Start by flipping the cards over. Good, then pick them all up and show them to me. Stop, stop, stop! You're performing here, understand? That means everything has to have the right pace. 
too fast and people won't want to bet too slow and they'll know you're a cheat. Keep the rhythm and let's try again. Now for the important part, the secret that makes it work. You can either play fair and put the queen down or cheat by putting down the card behind it. Try again. God damn it. QTE's the game. That, I mean, that other zone in, in the middle there is not the perfect zone. What'd you choose? Not, don't tell me. Now for the fun part. Mix them up, but be careful to keep a good rhythm. Alright, now, take your time and swap two cards. Make it look deliberate. Very good. I didn't even see you cheat. I think you're ready now. This is a very, very interesting game. McGregor is probably after you already. Well, it's not the uncertain hand of chance that has me in this dump. I'm glad you appreciate my hospitality. At least it smells better than Versailles. <clears throat> ah, come in, boy. I was waiting for you. Yes, come. Meet the magician. I will wait outside. <laughs> I'm sorry to my French viewers. The Count seems to think you have an ability. Trick me. Magnificent! No time for me to show you a trick then. I'm going to teach you how to read an opponent's mind. I'll prove it to you now. In fact, I'm so confident in my abilities, I'll put 40... Beep! On the line. Or 40 coins. I'll take that as a yes. 40 gillies! Pick a card, any card from the deck, and place it on the top. Remember which one you chose. Good, the card you chose is on the top, and you remember it? Excellent, now pick a number, let's say between two and five. Alright, now watch this. I'm going to shuffle the deck and then cut it. I think I picked the two of clubs. Abracadabra, I know where your card is in the deck. Remember the number you chose? Watch. One. Two. Three. Four. According to the number you picked, this next one should be your card. Oh, it's spades. Good, because there is no way I'm parting with my coins over that. And relax, you owe me nothing. The Count told me of your origins. They can see that look in your eye. It's always the same. You want to know how I did it? Well, I'm willing to explain since you showed such promise with the three-card Monty. Alright, so, I've chosen my deck. The Ace of Diamond. Now, Snake, have you ever heard of the Diamond Chief? I placed it at the top of the deck. For the time being, let's keep it simple. I'll choose the number one. That means all we have to do is keep the Ace at the top. Let's see what happens if we start shuffling. As we first start mixing the cards, we can keep an eye on the Ace. But if we keep shuffling, we quickly lose track of it. Damn. Let's reset the deck and see what we can do differently. Start shuffling again, but only drop a clump of cards once. At this stage, we know that the ace is at the top 
of the pile in our bottom hand, but if we keep shuffling, we'll lose it. Suppose you're wondering how I kept track of your card when I shuffled and cut the deck before. You're right to look suspicious. The trick is to put a marker next to our card so we can find it later, even after more shuffling. You do this by dropping one card onto the pile and offsetting it slightly. This is called in-jogging. Remember it well, boy. That's it. Now you can shuffle the rest without worrying about losing the ace. It's easier said than done. I've done card tricks. Like, there was a little obsession point in my life where I was obsessed with learning how to do card tricks. I wasn't, like, good, but... You know, I knew a couple ones, and I combined a couple and created, like, one or two unique ones with the combination. We're going back to, like, when I was 14, so <laughs> this is a long time ago, but I was just rotten at anything and everything shuffling, so. Great. Now we know where the ace is, but we want it at the top, not somewhere in the middle, so now what? Well, that's where cutting comes in. We can feel for the in-jogged marker with our fingers and cut the deck at that point. The next card down is our ace, remember? So when we recombine the piles, it'll be at the top of the deck. But why trust me? Let's allow the cards to do the talking. Voila! As if by magic, the ace of diamonds back at the top of the deck. Let's see if you understood that. Try shuffling and cutting, making sure the ace gets back to the top at the end. lost my card by shuffling over it. Let's see if you've got it right. That looks like the Ace of Diamonds to me. Well done. Would you like to practice it again? I want to try one more time because I want to see if you can use the uh, D-pad. You can. It's way easier with the D-pad. Let's take this trick up a gear, then. Think about what we've learned already. By the end of the trick, we wanted the ace at the top of the deck. Sure enough, we dealt out some cards and the ace came out first. The real trick is a bit more impressive. You let someone else choose the ace's position. You see, boy, giving your target the feeling that they're in power is the key to pulling the rug out from underneath their feet. So with that in mind, imagine I'm your mark and I've chosen the number four. You need to offset the ace with three other cards. This means that when you deal, the ace won't be first, but fourth. I'll teach you how to add these offsetting cards while you, whilst you shuffle. Let's start as we did before. Shuffle some cards down. Good, now before in-jogging, we need to offset the ace to the correct position. Drop three more cards, one at a time. Two, three. Great, now create yourself a marker by in-jogging the card. All that's left to do is shuffle the remaining cards. It all looked right to me. Let's see, shall we? One. Two, three, and there's the Ace of Diamonds as the fourth card, just as planned. Impressive work. Now, before you go running off trying to impress everyone with your newfound wizardry, heed some advice. There's nothing more embarrassing than messing up a magic trick, so keep practicing. Neither me nor anyone you show this to will pick the number four just because you learned it. So pay attention to which number I is picked, and only offset the card that far. This time... Pick the number two. Hmm, that should have been the Ace of Diamonds. Why don't you give it another try? I'll reset the deck for you. I fucked up yet again.
The number five feels special today, so I'll choose that. One, one, two, four. Fuck. The Ace of Diamonds, exactly where I asked for it. Well done. Would you like to practice it again? Very well, you seem to know what you're doing. You're a quick study. The Count has done well. You tricked the magician. I hope you didn't sign away your soul when I've been working so hard to earn it. Oh, come on, lad. It's not like you've sold it to death itself. So you're part of the family now. We share everything here, including our gains. Everything we give to the camp will be given a good use. It's like a poor people's bank. We support the elderly and the ones who can't work anymore like Arenio. I also hope that one day we could use that money to change things for real in this country. I will give 20 coins. Your half of the money is yours to spend how you want. We would appreciate if you could spare some for our cause. We all give what we can. Thank you. We're done here. We should keep moving. Go to the inn. We are not going to this inn for leisure, of course. Not when there's coin to be made. That simple trick we pulled at the tavern won't work. How do you feel about taking a seat at the table? Ha, <laughs> you have a source for the game already, I see. You won't be playing to win, of course. You'll be aiding me. Before I get to explaining our next strategy, do you need a refresher on card values? Good. Similar to last time, I need you to signal to me if you know of my opponent's cards. I doubt we'll find anyone quite so drunk as before, so I'll need to bet. I'll need better information if we are to win. You need to communicate the suit and the value of the opponent's best card. That'll be enough to tip the scales. The way you hold your cards and how you play them will teach me everything. Because this is a pinch and drop signal. Okay, let's start with clubs. Play a card from your hand, following three fingers in the air. Very good. For hearts, hold the card with two fingers extended. Alright, I'm sure you know where this is going. One finger lifted for spades. And the closed hand will signal diamonds. Shall we move on to signaling card values, or shall we go over signaling suits again? Great. The way you place a card will signal its value to me. For aces, raise the highest card to the highest point before letting it fall to the table. <laughs> this fucking voice. Just like that for kings, show me a strident ruler by reaching forward and placing him deep onto the table. <laughs> Good, now for queens, treat the monarch with respect. Gently lower the lady down and place her on the table. And for jacks, pull your hand back before you fling the rascal forward. Well done. Would you like to go over that again, or shall we try putting this all together? I suppose you're wondering how you'll see our opponent's hand if you're set at the table. Any ideas? You. Quite right. You can't pour the wine when you're a customer. The responsibility will rest on my shoulders. I'll deal in such a way that you may steal a look at our Mark's cards. Commit to memory the highest value card before they get they get dealt. Don't forget its suit. The lucky wretch is dealt two cards of joint highest value, but with different suits, either card will do. He calls this technique dealer's glimpse. Let's practice.
Surely someone must have noticed. I wasn't paying attention. Wow, I got lucky. Ah, bravo! It seems we have ourselves a plan. I, I get it, but I, I just got lucky there, because I was just like, Oh, I see what's happening here. I want to repeat it one more time. So it's the highest value, so... That's got to be an ace of diamonds. Let's see if I remember the signals. Diamonds, and we got an ace. Oh, I guess I don't really have to remember because it just helps you figure that out. We have got quite a journey yet. Some handwriting practice will pass the time. Now, let me find my quill. This inn has proved to be the fertile hunting ground in the past. Take a look at the man in red seated over there with all his finery. Let's please him for all he is worth. Now, stay back here until I am seated. You seem utterly bored, my young friend. I, I happen to know the perfect cure for that ailment. You're not a doctor, I hope. I may be bored, but I'm not suicidal. I only administer the sweetest form of thrill. Uh, good old games of cards. That's a remedy f my humors can agree with. Please, have a seat. Bet 10. Ace of diamonds. This kind of just makes me want to play cards. Growing sick of your medicine, Count. I do stay for another round, young patient. Eh, it won't hurt one bit. Gonna wipe this dude out. So there's a nine of diamonds there. King of clubs. King of diamonds. Stringent defeat again. You've got a dreadful bedside manner, Count. <laughs> Only through suffering do we feel alive. Seven of spades. Four of diamonds. Queen of clubs. Currently the highest value. Queen of clubs. I'm not sure how this would be enough to, like, win the game. But, you know, whatever. Every little bit helps, I guess. Ah, well, I can't make the bet for the next round. Your treatment was expensive, but appreciated. We should say a game of cards a day. Keeps the doctor away, not an apple. I fully agree, my friend. The apple only works if you're good at throwing it at the doctor. Thank you, monsieur. I will be a good patient and follow your prescription. That didn't- that didn't end in murder, at least. Hmm. 
You are headed to the manor of Baroness de Beauregard. She has the look, the laugh, and the breast of a horse. And now you should never mock a lady, especially a rich one. Needless to say, we are visiting for her fortune, not her company. You will be developing the trick we pulled at your employer's dump. Remember how you used the cloth to signal a suit? Let's take that a step further. As my servant, you'll be able to pour drinks for everyone at the table. And, owing to my widely known fastidiousness, an extra cleaning won't raise eyebrows either. I can play aggressively if I know the exact count of my opponent's most numerous suit. To communicate the count, simply repeat the signal without interruption. Let's give that a try. Good, now let's try three hearts. What then? That's right, now show me the four spades. Good, you seem to get the idea. Shall we try with you spying my hand, or shall we go over it again? Excellent. done. It wasn't so hard, was it? We can go over it again if you like, though. No need to flog a dead horse. I say we skip the rehearsal today and see your verb Decl declensions instead. But before we go putting the cards away, I am preparing a small surprise to multiply our gains by the end of the game. An impromptu, if you will. Allow me to teach you the final technique of the evening. I call it dog-eared card. I'll slip a second deck into your pocket as you pour my drink. Take it to another room, find an ace and bend the corner of it like you would to mark your place in a book. The next time you pour my drink, I'll take the second deck back. Follow my instructions and you'll be fine. Let's do a practice run. Well done. Boy, things are getting a little bit more complex here. It's compounding complexity. Trust me, lad, it'll make sense in good time. My ploy will be far more convincing if you're kept in the dark. Would you like more practice? No? Very well. Time for those, those verb declensions then. <laughs> we're getting close. Remember, follow my instructions and everything will be fine. Oh, hello! Very hotty totty! My dear Count, here in my humble home, what a little scoundrel. You flit about like a hummingbird, am I, an, am I not in a flower for you? Unfortunately, being close to you turns me into an imbecile without remedy. Are you going to play as an imbecile tonight? I cannot wait to see that. I am yours to slaughter, as always. Uh-oh. I didn't get this. Uh oh. Oh god, I got lucky. Well played, Count. I thought I had you. Beginner's luck, dear Baroness. You remind me of the charming McGregor, the King's advisor. I have heard of him, a busy fellow with a lot of interests in the new world. 
He also keeps many secrets for the king. <laughs> right there. I wouldn't know. What about the events of the 12 bottles of milk? You win again, Count. Boy, how exactly were you planning to pour us wine with an empty bottle? Go and fetch us more from the other room. Mental. Well played, Count. I thought I had you. You owe me a secret, Baroness. The twelve bottles of milk, was it? I am all ears. Hmm, McGregor wouldn't like me to tell the king's stories. You should visit my old friend Armit Ar Armitz, the musketeer. He was there, you know. That's the twelve bottles of milk. Shh, it's a secret. Let's play again. Just two spades. Count, you have me beat! Ah, don't look so upset, Baroness. It's not pretty on you. How da- I jest, of course. You are ever breathtaking. <laughs> Your sorry jokes and acid compliments won't lighten my mood, Count. You know I loathe to lose, and I tire of seeing you disappointed. How about I just give you a chance to earn your money back? Pity now, what did you have in mind? Sadly, I cannot part with tonight's winnings. My poor mother, the Duchess, needs her medicine. But this pocket watch here belongs to my father, the Cardinal. It's worth 200. I'll have my boy cut the deck, for fairness's sake. If he gets an ace, you owe me 200 more. Otherwise, I will give you the watch. I trust you are satisfied with the terms. I'm feeling quite generous of late. And here I thought I'd be the one regretting your visit. You're on! You know me, boy. Superstitious as I come, so don't overthink this. Cut the deck wherever you feel like, and with my luck, it'll be an ace. Huzzah! Well done, Count! Wow! Fair is fair, I suppose. Take your money. It's been a pleasure playing this evening. I do hope we can do it again sometime. I just guessed that that's where the ace would be because it was like stuck there for a slight second. We are headed to Talus. A city on the verge of hysterical frenzy is the best place to make a profit. The whole city will be busy, noisy, and distracted. We cannot let this opportunity pass. The magician showed you a technique that allows you to maintain and offset the stack, didn't he? Whilst you now have a strong foundation to work with. The technique has some flaws. Fiddling around with the deck at the table is just too risky. So, how else can we stack the deck? You'll use something I call the full harvest. You will collect cards at the end of a round so they sit favorably in the deck during the next one. Picture in your mind how the cards will fall if you're the dealer. Because I'm sitting to your right, I'll be dealt last. That's where we want high value cards. Up the card clumps in an order to ensure I'll end up with a high card when you deal. It's much more 
fun to do the, the French, terrible French accent during the story segments. It's too soon to be grabbing that clump, lad. I won't get dealt the high, sh the strong card. Pick up the other clump so we can reset and try again. Oh, okay, so... Yeah, tutorial stuff in this voice is just not working. Oh, lad, that is not correct, I'm afraid. You need to pick up the clump from right to left. Oh, I get it now. I did pick it up from right to left. Do I have to press left first? Left to right. I mean, it makes more sense when put like that, but it right to left confused me. Make sure I get three high value cards this time. Oh my god. Um... This, this is not how my brain works. Motherfucker. I don't, I don't like this one at all. My brain is- is intuitively doing wacky things here, so. Right, so now we want to do that. Now- now if I do this, if I do left first, so I pick up left card. Oh, God. Got one. This is miserable. I think I understand now. I mean, it shows which... Okay, I was pressing the button left and right. I was going from left to right. You just have to press the button once. So that's that's where I started making a mistake. Um, so here, watch. I think I got it. So we'll do... We'll pick it up 10 first, right? And then we'll pick this up. 8 ace. That'll give him that. And then we'll do this. Doesn't matter which order. And then we're gonna do... Ah, oh, wrong way! Oh, God! I screwed it up again. This one I'm going to fuck up continually. That's a guarantee. Uh. Left to right. Okay, so. Then uh. this one's gonna be picked up left. Oh. Hey, Link. Me felt. I'm- I'm so sorry for people watching this that are like, BOOM! Please. Bean dip. How do you- why? Bean dip, why? Alright. Yeah, cause there's another card there. Alright, never mind. This one- this one's bad. I have to take into account- you know what? I'm playing this right now as if there's a timer. There's no timer. I'm just going to do this right. We'll start with this. Do that. I 
Okay, and then we need just any order is fine. I, I get it now. Well done, lad. Would you like to move on to the next part of the plan? Different voice! Imagine you've just collected the cards from the table. Think about how we arranged them and uh, how they will be dealt out. Every fourth card will be dealt to me. Next to you, they will have high values. But of course, we can't start dealing just yet. We have to shuffle. Or pretend to, at least. Allow me to introduce you to the art of ineffective shuffling. Drop some cards. Don't leave your stack behind. Our favorable stack is now at the bottom, still in order. The rest of the cards will pile up on top. We eventually want to bring the ordered cards back to the top, undisturbed. To help with that, we will need to mark where they are in the deck. One card poking out the deck should do the trick. Good, now you'd offer me... Offer for me to cut since we're such fair and honorable players. Watch how I use my fingers to find your injogged card. Then you can combine the cards by putting the bottom pile on top. And that's it! Our ordered cards are ready to be dealt out! Impressive work! You understand the plan then, lad? He gathers the deck here. They pretend to shuffle before leaning on me to cut the deck. Let me scatter some cards down on the table and you can rehearse. Got it. Really like these little animations. We can wrap up and rest before our arrival if you'd like. Great. I will fetch my quill and you can show me your vowels. I see the capital. We have arrived. Remember, the stakes are getting higher, lad. We cannot be discovered. You are cheating! Please don't make that face. Sir, I can explain. I am truly happy to make your acquaintance. You are? The nobility, the nobility is full of scammers and cheats, but they are mostly inept amateurs. Real con artists are a rarity for good reason. Voltaire, come here and meet these gentle ho homes. What? Voltaire? What is it, my young friend? You see I'm too busy for your games. These men are cheats, professional ones. Cheats, you say? Truly corrupted souls. Oh, interesting. Monsieur Voltaire, I respectfully disagree. We simply teach men a justified fear of cards and gambling. And we get paid for this humble service. It does sound like an elastic conception of virtue and morale. Should we play to test your logic? Oh yes, please. Cheat again. It makes me wonder, are you going to have to, like, out-cheat other cheaters at some point in this game? Oh, oops. At least they give you some extra time. Uh... bit of a mind fuck, but interesting. 
I didn't see anything. You are really good. Could I ask you a question? Please do. Do you play to earn money or do you play for the mere pleasure of tricking your opponents? Neither. Each game I play is just a brick in the edifice I am building. Each trick is an element of a larger plot. I play patiently, slowly, till I can trick the sun. Like you, Monsieur de Voltaire, one letter at a time, one idea at a time, until the whole world changes. This is art. Another round. The expenses feel no different to a trip to the theater. And you're in luck, good sir, for we have an encore planned. Oops. Wrong way. I mean, I got two of them. Is it just up to chance now, or do we instantly lose? Oh, for fuck's sake. I really didn't see you do any tricks, did you, Voltaire? No, I didn't, but then you won this turn, my friend. The cruelest trick of the devil is to pretend to be an angel. Try that one more time. Okay, so uh, I just. Uh, it's going quick, you know, so uh, I'm kind of. freaking out a little bit here. There we go. I became the grape lady. This little experiment is getting too expensive for me, I'm afraid. I shall go back to my writings. Thank you, gentlemen. It was enlightening. I look forward to seeing the sun blush. Uh, oh, that's the real Voltaire. It's all connected. It's the French cinematic universe. Renaissance cinematic universe. Good morning, young man. You seem rather quaint this morning. The dark beauty of a classic hero in an old romance. Now, what can I do for you? The Count said he would donate 200. You're free to give what you want. Thank you. I know an orphanage in need. I will take care of the rest. Did I really just donate 400? Oh well. Overall, you and the Count have contributed 440 to our cause. It's very generous of you and the Count. Are you ready to leave? Welcome. Is the Count treating you well? Mm -hmm. 
All right. I mean, it's a cool game. I think I'm done for now. I wanted to just kind of get a taste of it. And, uh... It's nerve-wracking. And it's very inventive. Uh, I can't actually, with the controller, use... I couldn't select anything in the options. That was weird. But yeah, I mean, again, there is that influence from Barry Lyndon. The storyline gets a little dark, but so far, it, the writing is pretty good. And, um... Wow, a game about card cheating. The only thing is, I'm just wondering, like, the compounding amount of things... Is it gonna get too much? So far, not so much. Like, I've, I've actually... Even though I screwed up that one time, and couldn't figure out that one trick... It's not too bad. It's not as overwhelming as I thought it would be. And all the cheating tricks are taught to you very slowly. So yeah, I think it's really cool. I may come back to it. Let me know what you think. Um, I've been starting so many games lately and not finishing them because there are so many games releasing that are interesting and I want to check them out and see what sticks. But... It's cool. Again, sorry to my French viewers. Take care. Goodbye.